So I'm um, talking about my YouTube. Yes, I am a YouTube coach. You have to keep at it. You have to keep at it. You have to be consistent. Even if you can't be present every day, you can hire a virtual assistant. week the third week mm -hmm. 21 days i'm like is this thing called out for me so that relating with you in the comment section that's why i always um tell people i tell youtubers especially upcoming youtubers that do not ignore um people who leave comments on your channel because i don't believe that you know impossible exists impossible doesn't exist in my dictionary so i learned how to make posts in a month you know so i started my couture you know back in texas so we moved to california in 2017 you know and it keeps me going you know before the end of your workout you find out that you're already you're fired or you know you're ready to go you know so the algorithm actually favors um consistency but um i would say i started this journey my ambitious journey from the age of 10. Hi everyone, welcome to your favorite channel where you get to learn about leadership, communication, and networking. On this special session, we have an entrepreneur, a fashion specialist, and also a social media growth specialist with us today. She is someone that words really cannot describe how magnificent she is. So I would let her do most of the introduction by herself. But at this point, I'd like you all to join me in welcoming Miriam Adepoju on this channel. Welcome, Miriam. And it's a pleasure having you here. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Dako, for inviting me today. Um, I really appreciate it. So um, let me kick start from where you start. So my name is Miriam Adekochu. I'm based here in San Jose, California. I'm actually a recent graduate of California State University, Dominguez Hills. I actually graduated two weeks ago. So um, I moved to US four years ago, and um, I used to be a banker. I was a former banker back home for three years. So when I moved here to start my family, I resigned, you know, from here, you know, so I had to start a new career. So I had to learn how to, you know, um, make clothes, you know, yeah, African clothing um, specifically. Yeah, like um, the one behind, you know, my background, I made that. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So I learned how to make clothes in a month, you know, so I started my couture you know back in texas so we moved to california in 2017 so that's when i started my couture real you know for real here in california so i started my um master's degree my mba journey um uh, the very next year which was 2018 so i just graduated about two weeks ago so i'm um, talking about my youtube yes i am a youtube coach um, so last year during the pandemic, I started my YouTube channel and I got monetized within six months, you know, so now I am helping people start their YouTube channel and also get monetized within six months. So I had my first masterclass um, in January 2021. So if anyone is interested, go ahead and hit me up and, you know, you of get a course, there will be a link below on how to reach out to you. But okay. you said something mind blowing. You said you learned fashion designing in one month. Yes, I Now, did. that should be like, I don't want to hear any excuse from anyone. If anyone is saying, oh, I don't know what to do. I, this country is hard, uh, whatever. I don't want to. That just killed off any excuse <laughs> anyone can give me. Because you learned fashion design in one month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was yeah. the process like learning it? Did you um, have do it over youtube or go to school so yeah. okay no, just I've, take us through was, the process it was it was tough i think it was one of the toughest um endeavors I've, I've encountered or made you know um in my lifetime <laughs> you know because what actually happened was my husband is a software engineer and one of his friends just came over to the house one afternoon back in texas he was a, he was a master student at the time now he's studying a phd so his friend came over to the house to learn how to code or something, write programs. So he came with his wife, you know, um, that day. So we got talking and I just 
mentioned that, oh, I've been looking for someone to teach me how to sew. And then she mistakenly said, oh, I can sew. I was like, are you for real? And that's how I resumed at her place the very next day, 10 wow. a.m. 10 p.m. every day. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Come rain, come sun. I only give them Saturdays and Sundays. You know, I only don't go on weekends. But Mondays to Fridays, I was diligent. Like I go Monday, I mean, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. So um, the craziest thing was I wasn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand anything. Mm -hmm. The first week, the second week, the third week, mm -hmm. 21 days, I'm like, is this thing cut out for me? Like, am I cut out for this thing? So mm -hmm. I had to start reminding myself that, girl, you wrote I can back in, ex in Nigeria, which is one of the toughest exams anybody can write, you know, mm -hmm. and you were passing the exams. Mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. then I also reminded myself that a lot of people, you know, that show in Nigeria don't have um, formal education. Most of them are illiterate and if they can sew it, so what about you? I studied economics for crying out loud. Probably mm -hmm. just at Awolowo our University. Mm -hmm. You know, I have done econometrics. Why can't you just get this thing? You mm -hmm. know, so I called a friend of mine who had a couture in Ibadan, you know, and I told her that I can't, I'm not getting this thing. This is like the 21 oh. day. She was like, no, it's very easy. You get it. <laughs> Like, but I'm not getting it. You know, I I, I kept going 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. You know, I would learn. I would, she would show me all. I would still like nod my head, like, okay, just keep doing it. Okay, okay. On the last day, it was like the 30th day. You know, at night I was about leaving. It was almost 10 p.m. And then she did an illustration. She was gonna make an outfit. And then the moment she did the circumference and she did. I just got it. I just got it. It was like my brain opened that night. Hmm. And guess what? The very next day when I was coming to class, her house, mm -hmm. um, I came with a fully sewn dress. So you did that overnight? Overnight, yes. Crazy. She was in shock. She was like, no way. No. No. <laughs> yes. I said, yes, I did it. Wow. Oh my he did was to get this thing. When I got home, I cut the fabric unsupervised. You know, I made the dress for myself, my size. Mm -hmm. You know, so I cut that. And it was even a complicated style, you know, mm -hmm. that I made, honestly. You know, so I made the, it was a um, an off-shoulder, um, um, cold shoulder gown. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, dress. Where you have this place splits. Like, there's a top separate. And then the, the this part, the sleeve starts from here. So this place is black. Mm -hmm. so me nobody supervised me nobody supervised me you know you know nobody you know can sew around me so i did it myself like i sewed this dress overnight yeah you know, that I just shows <laughs> what you're capable of achieving if you're willing to dedicate you know your time to learning something and if you're willing to just like you said the first 29 days were hard but then on the 30th day you said you said it was like something just opened up in your mind. So you were like just waiting to push through that final day until now it became yours, until you finally owned this thing, which is just amazing, which shows that a lot of people have been doing something and they probably gave up too easily. They didn't wait until that 29th day. Maybe some people gave up on the seventh day, on the 14th day, on the 21st day. Maybe some people even on the 28th day. Yeah. You know, so... The trick, the magic is just, I mean, there's no magic in this. It's just you sticking to it. That's just what I what I got from what you just said, which is inspiring. It's really, it's really, really inspiring. I know you do a lot of things. I know you're you're a full-time mom, you're a full-time student, you run your business, you're a YouTuber, and you are also very good at branding and creating presence online. So now, how do you create a well-known presence online for your business and, you know, and for yourself? How do you bring both together and, you know, use your online presence to promote what you do and get people engaged and involved in what you do? Okay, the first thing I'll say is you show up consistently don't just disappear. don't ghost away mm -hmm. you know no matter what even if you can't be present every day you can hire a virtual assistant 
you know, to make sure that your presence is felt every day. Because honestly, um, when you go stuff, it's like um, visiting a store today and they are open. You go there next week, they are not open. You know, it's, it's like they are not consistent. You don't have in that brand. So the first thing I would say is make sure that you show up consistently. Come rain, come sun. Make sure okay. that's always, you know, there. That's number okay. one. Number two is um, collaborate with other business people, other business-minded people, you know. Um, you know, you have to, you need people. You need people. Mm-hmm. Whether you're not, you know, because your network um, can limit you to other um, people, other people that you can get to meet. Like, um, I, I'm talking now on your own platform. Um, mm-hmm. Your guests, your viewers will get to see me and meet me for the first time. This is what mm-hmm. I'm talking about. You know, you make sure that you show up and then you also, you know, collaborate with other um, business-minded people. I also mm-hmm. attend you know, a number of networking events, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, yes, um, which they, they take place like um, bi-monthly, you know, and I always make it a day because there are many people from all over the world, you know, that, you know, attend these networking events. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, I plan to launch my um, three businesses, actually, um, very soon. The news mm-hmm. will be yeah, um, the news is going to be out, but I, I can I can say it here. So I am planning to lon- launch my ready to wear outfits, mm-hmm. you know, sizes, African outfits, you know, mm-hmm. different styles, different sizes. So, but it's still in the in the pipeline. The the, the outfits are ready. Um, so all I need to get is um models, you know, hire a photographer and you know put everything together and mm-hmm. get. A- a website, you know, a very chastised website, and then you know, get it up and running. You Are you going to be organizing a fashion show? I will. I will. Okay. Subsequently. Subsequently, I will definitely. Yeah, maybe you know, we'll be maybe you know. we'll be there to cover it for you or something. I don't know yet though. But from what you just said, you said show up, be consistent, and collaborate. Absolutely. And if there's anything anyone should get from this session i think that's the key thing that's like the the the, if you don't have those three things there is no way you could succeed in business there is no way and you said we could apply this in uh in creating an online presence which is something that i see a lot of people struggle with Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people and just like from the first narration you gave, a lot of people give up so easily on social media, on YouTube. There was this day I was working at my store and this lady came in and she told me she had a YouTube channel. And I was like, yeah, check it out. And she was like, um, so I told her I have a YouTube channel. I so that, yeah, you can subscribe to mine. I'll subscribe to yours. And she was like, nobody watches YouTube anymore. I was like, what do you mean? She said she releases content and no one watches it. And I was like, no. It depends on how you show up, like what you said, how you how consistent are you? If you don't put content out there, I mean, given the fact that at the very beginning, maybe you probably have just two viewers or maybe 10 viewers or something. It's the consistency um, that really matters over time. Do you understand how the algorithm works and how can you work in line with the way the algorithm works? with the social media platform okay um first i'll talk about um youtube first and foremost you know because i'm a youtube coach um so the first thing i'll say is um you should show up Mm -hmm. and post off at any point in time let me give you an example um last year i i have a pattern for shooting my videos i shoot Mm -hmm. different you know, in a day. And I have a set, a set, I set aside um, a day in the week that I shoot all of my, you know, content. So I prepare my content in advance and I shoot different episodes and then I upload them. I edit everything and I upload everything on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So as I remember 2020, I already had enough content till June, 2021. Crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess what happened in January of 2021? I fell sick. I was sick from January till March of 20. It was bad that I couldn't talk. It was bad. Hmm. And I kept releasing my videos. Nobody could tell that, you know, this it was ongoing, even though, you know, I was available as it were. 
but I was still dropping my videos. So that is really going to help. It might, you might not see the results quickly, you know, early, but you have to keep at it. You have to keep at it. You have to be consistent and um, stick to the days that you shoot your videos. I mean, that you upload, your, you publish your videos, actually. Stick to those days. If you decide, if you decide, you know, in your mind that, okay, I'm going to drop a video every Mondays and Wednesdays like I do, make sure that you drop your videos every Mondays and Wednesdays. Because truth be told, um, it might look like people are not watching, but there's times if you the day you get inconsistent people will be like what's going on i've not seen your video you know mm -hmm. so you have to really show up the algorithm is going to favor you eventually if you are getting impatient remember mr bean beans you mm -hmm. know remember, yeah on on youtube mm -hmm. this man shot a video consistently for five years five mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody watches his videos like he gets like pieces like <laughs> you know views that you can count on your you know from your fingers mm -hmm. you know? but five years after it was like the algorithm just picked him up you know right now he's one of the highest paid um youtubers he's one of the highest he's, he's earning millions and millions of dollars every month you know so the algorithm actually favors um consistency and if you think that um your efforts is, you know, wasted or nobody is watching. Trust me, there are so many other people like you as well. And the truth of the matter is, I can categorically tell you that 90, over 90% of YouTubers give up. Mm -hmm. Over 90% of YouTubers give up. So it's the few, you know, um, less than 10%, you know, that actually get to make it. So do you think you can, you know, you can withstand the winds, the storm? You know, like it's coming. That like it looks like you're just, you know, there's a lot of work. You know, honestly, as a creator, I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. You know, you shoot this video, get all your equipment together, your content together. You know, make sure you drop these videos. Come bring, come on. Editing is gangster. It's a lot of work. Trust me. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you take the pains to do all these things that nobody's watching. A lot of people actually get, um, you know, they get. Um, frustrated and then they stop. They're like, oh, I'm tired of YouTube. It's understandable. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you persevere. You have to persevere. Yes, it's a game of perseverance. You have to persevere, definitely. You know, and don't give up. You know, and even on your strategies, you can change your strategies. You know, talking about, you know, like I always say on my channel, I say insanity is when you do the same thing every time and you you are expecting a different result. Mm -hmm. No, you. Have if you want a different result, you have to change your strategy. You know, take for instance, you've done something consistently and nothing has really improved. You can decide to say, okay, can I collaborate more with people this year? You can decide to map out the people you are targeting. You know, you can to target people in different parts of the world. You know, Australia, um, USA, Canada, you know, just make sure that you are targeting um, developed countries because mm -hmm. YouTube actually pays um, people that watch your content in developed countries much more than when you, you know, you have more viewers from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Ethiopia, you know what I mean? From you know, India. Currency. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to target such people. So you can decide to collaborate with um, bigger YouTubers in, you know, these parts of the world, Canada, USA, um, um, Belgium, UK, Ireland, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. France. Yeah, and, and so on. So um, you have to be really intentional, you know, and tell yourself it's going to work, come rain, come sun, and be strategic about it. I know you're a very inspiring human being, and a lot of people learn a lot from you, but I just want to ask you, do you have people that you also look up to, people that inspire you, and what, what do you learn from these people? Give us some names and what do you learn from these people? Definitely, I have a lot of people that I learn from. In fact, as a matter of fact, I have a coach. <laughs> I have a YouTube coach. In fact, I have YouTube coaches. Yes, okay. you know. So, um, I know one of my coaches is making thirty thousand wow. dollars every month. Wow. If you think that you're putting in a lot of efforts or enough efforts, think about the efforts that these people are putting in. They are goal. For one of them, their goal is to 
drop 15 videos per day. Did you hear me right? Mm -hmm. 15 videos every day. You know, a lot of people struggle to even drop a video per week. You know, let alone two videos in a week. Let alone 15 videos per day. The reason is because, um, you know, the algorithm begins to see the more you drop your content, apart from dropping content, mm -hmm. apart from that your content is, is valuable, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you are present, you are alive, you know, mm -hmm. you're vibe people want to people want to relate to people that are you know that are fun loving people that mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't bore them with your videos you know mm -hmm. so give life into your videos mm -hmm. you know so the goal is to drop 15 videos every every day you know and the goal is to go from 30k to hundred thousand dollars every month and the more you drop a video the more you know you get views the more you know you get paid you know on youtube so once you hack it that way you are fine you are good to go yeah and there are so many people that i actually look up to right from the onset right from time i've always had um mentors that i look up to you know and um, right from my days as an undergrad you know i've had friends and if you if you notice that i talk about um the circle of friends that you have the people that you hang around with and honestly you are an average of the five people that you hang around with. You know, if you have five successful people, you're gonna be the sixth person. And if you have five idiots, you will be the sixth person. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. So the truth is I have always, you know, read books, you know, leadership books. I've always, you know, um, hang around these people. And um, when I have questions, if I'm not sure about, oh, I wanna take a step, you know, I ask them, you know, because these people have actually passed through and uh, what I am passed, I'm about to pass through now. So they can give you first hand, you know, advice, candid advice, you know, that's mm -hmm. okay, best way to go about. It. So you actually need all such people around you, honestly. And another thing is sometimes you have mentors that you you don't know, like one on one, but mm -hmm. you can learn from them, you know, from a distance, watch what they do. You know, and someday, somehow, if you still want to get to meet them, honestly, you will get to meet them because I don't believe that, you know, impossible exists. Impossible doesn't exist in my dictionary. You know, so if you want to meet people like, you know, Oprah Winfrey, people like John Damon, you know, people like Kelly Tam, they are human beings like you and I, you know, so you can always you know, find a way to, to get across to them. But so make sure that you are doing your own thing as well. Let them see that, okay, this person has done something. You know, and this person has made an effort. Okay, let's see what we how we can help this person or how we can move this person to the next level. You know what I mean? You know, so yeah, I think that, that goes a lot. And not keeping your mouth shut. If you need help, always ask. The worst you get is the no. You know, but at least ask. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy to ask. Everybody, you know, we're all once babies. We have to okay. learn single thing that we know today. You know, so it doesn't matter if somebody knows, you know, I've heard that thing before you or have done that thing, has been successful in that thing before you, it doesn't matter. You know, you can always, you know, break that, um, break the ice and don't be shy to ask questions, you know, whenever you, you, you need help. Do you have like one book you would like to recommend um, with respect to leadership or with respect to branding or with respect to entrepreneurship? 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So you, um, you on your channel, mm -hmm. you are very energetic. And even right now, you're very energetic. You and you just said you just got off uh, a YouTube session and you're back here and your energy is not down. Your energy is just boom, boom, boom. high there. Is there anything you do to keep your energy level high? Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, self-care is very important. So I don't joke with my workouts. Okay. I don't work out at all. So um, it's like refueling your energy. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, I do my workouts. Prior to the pandemic, I used to, I, I'll be on the treadmill for one hour. So after the pandemic, we were all locked up, of course, in the house. So I was doing 1,000 skips every day. So wow. the day um, President Joe Biden won, I did 2,000 skips in honor of Mr. President. <laughs> okay. So, That's awesome. <laughs> so now I do a minimum of 30 minutes workout every morning. And I use this 
um, beautiful ladies on um, YouTube. I just discovered them on YouTube and I even give them a free shout out on my channel. They are called Kukua Fitness. You know, they are very energetic. Three young ladies, you know. Um, once I see their faces, I am just good to go. We just go, you know. So I do about three of their workout sessions every morning, you know, and it keeps me going, you know. Before the end of your workout, you find out that you're already, you're fired up, you know, you're ready to go. <laughs> You know, and then I also divide my day into two because I sleep at three and yeah, every day. Oh God, thank you. Somebody's hugging me. <laughs> so, um, um, okay. So what I do is I divide my day into two. I usually sleep um, in the evening. I sleep at 5 p.m., but it's 5.26, but it's okay. I'll still sleep. I don't joke with it because mm -hmm. I sleep at 4 a.m. every day. So I must take a nap mm -hmm. in the evening. Yeah, so I take a nap um, by five until seven, five to seven. My brain is already wired that way. So when I wake up by seven, I'm working like afresh. Like I just woke up, you know, for the day. So I'm able to work through the night again. Uh -huh. Because I have so many, like you said, I have so many things I need to do. You know, um, before, before now, about two weeks ago, when I was still studying, I had to do my homework, my assignments. In fact, when I'm having Zoom sessions, I'm, I'm doing something. I'm always multitasking. I'm always like um, taking my assignments, really sorting this one out. If it's negotiation tactics, I'm looking at it. If it's to respond to, you know, one of my colleagues, you know, discussion, discussion, I'm doing that quickly, you know, so that. And then I have a Facebook group. I have to schedule my Facebook group. I have to schedule my Instagram, you know, um, post in advance. I have to schedule it a week, you know, before. And then I have, I have to also plan you know, for my business as well. Like I said, I'm, I'll be launching um, my ready to wear collection. There is, and one, once it's time, I'll, you know, um, tell the whole world that, okay, it's time you guys can go ahead and order your outfit, you know. So yeah, I divide my day into two. I, I didn't do my workout, you mm -hmm. know, and then, yeah, I also take time to rest as well. Yeah, um, Sundays especially, but today I decided to go live on, on, on YouTube and to, you know, test it for the last time and find out how it works. You know, yeah. Yeah. so that's why today was an exception. You know, other than that, yeah, I make sure that I take time out for myself. I sleep, you know, I sleep, you know, and then I also, yeah. I don't do my sleep at all. Because, um, of course, you remember we studied economics and um, part of, um, the ways to measure how good you're doing or um, economic development mm -hmm. is how much leisure time do you have? Are you just working, working, working? Well, that's why apologies to nurses. I don't mean it's in a bad way, but mm -hmm. I, I can't take up, you know, a profession like nursing, you know, where you have to work from morning till night and then night shift again. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. The money's active, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all about passion. The same way you're passionate about what you do, they're passionate about what they do. So I think it's kind of balanced out just the way you went in, you know, full force, 29 days, learn this thing and the switch. Someone from Nelson will be like, I don't think I can do that, you know? And it's all about passion. That's what it can do. That's what you can do. And it's just, it keeps the balance because we can't do everything. And I completely understand that. Going back into YouTube, mm -hmm. um, you you said you were testing the life, the way the life functionality functions, and then you also said you had videos of like four months upfront. You have them ready to ready to go. Did you make use of the YouTube Premiere feature, whereby you upload all those videos and then you just set the dates and they okay. were just pumping up by themselves, or you had to go and upload it by yourself? No, I have to upload them myself. But I'm thinking of doing that right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I drop a video every Monday and Wednesday. So I was thinking of even doing that and scheduling the one for tomorrow in advance. Mm -hmm. Scheduling the one for, um, yeah, next Monday in advance. Because on Thursdays, on Wednesdays, actually, I go live on Instagram and I, and I upload it on, on YouTube, you know, to make it yeah. easy. Yeah. So, yeah, That's I'm good. thinking of starting that maybe tonight when I wake up. You know, Perfect. From Okay, so now you are on Instagram and you are on YouTube and you're also on Facebook. 
and you in fact have a facebook group which we will still talk about but i just want you to i want to hear from you which one do you prefer the most youtube versus instagram which one do you think is most effective based on how you use them or based on the result generated i think um i think for me i think youtube is it i think youtube 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 because um youtube is kind of like um worldwide and um it is easy for people to discover you on youtube people that have never seen the, your channel can just you know youtube actually um promotes our videos i hope you know mm -hmm. yeah your analytics you will see your reach you know so it might not lead to a lot of clicks but youtube has actually shown it to a number of people you know so maybe your thumbnail is not if it's not catchy enough they might not click or something or maybe they are in the first five minutes but when it comes to um youtube youtube is actually worldwide i also love facebook you know facebook because you seem to yeah there seems to be a lot of um traffic you know, mm -hmm. like buying traffic mm -hmm. on Facebook. Yes, they are mm -hmm. genuine buying. But most of the time, because of the age range of people on Instagram, even though it's like a devil that you have to dine with, you just have to be <laughs> You just have to be there, right? Honestly, yes. Okay. Um, the age range of those people, they are like always scrolling and scrolling. It's just a picture, you know. Mm -hmm. People just different kinds yeah, of Yeah, they want it fast yes you know so the i think youtube and the number two is facebook for me okay think, yeah. the next question is when it comes to monetization which social media i feel like i know your response to this but i just want to hear from you and i want us to hear from you and why did you choose this as far as monetization is concerned which of the social media platform do you think is the best and most effective and most efficient facebook instagram or youtube well, or TikTok. Maybe, maybe because I haven't explored TikTok that much, but I know I, I heard that TikTok is really gangsta. Like it's really, really cool. You know, but from what I know and mm -hmm. what I've experienced, I think YouTube, mm -hmm. you know, from my own experience, YouTube it, it is. Because um I recall that even before I got monetized and right after I got monetized, I started getting these emails from companies, you know, wanting to collaborate with me, wanting mm -hmm. to sponsor me, you know. Um, showcase their products on my on my um, channel. Like right now, I have a, 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 an electronics company that wants to um, give me a computer to review mm -hmm. free and then also pay me, you mm -hmm. know, for their products on my channel. And of course, as a YouTuber, the beautiful thing about being a YouTuber is that um, you have the the the, um, the privilege to charge any amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell them, okay, I'm gonna showcase your products for ten thousand dollars. That's your price. That's your price. If you're good, they pay you because um, you companies are actually still learning. They're still trying to find a way around YouTubers, how to um, work with YouTubers. So right now you have that privilege, you know, to say, okay, I'll, I'll charge. I mean, my 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 price is fifteen thousand dollars. So that's it. You mm -hmm. know, you have that kit ready. You send it to the company, and then they get back to you. Because honestly, if the companies were to go to the television stations go to cnbc abc to promote their their business they know that it's a lot of money <laughs> so whatever yeah, you buy, it's gonna be peanuts compared to what they would have and they would have access to your own audience real people people that are relating with you in the comment section that's why i always um tell people i tell youtubers especially upcoming youtubers that do not ignore um people who leave comments on your channel they are taking the time to watch your videos and they have dropped they are dropping comments please please and please do not ignore them yes yeah, so that goes a long way and i think youtube for one is something i would recommend is that platform i recommend okay so if i'm a new a young entrepreneur for example and i'm just coming up and i'm just looking for a way to burn my business and establish an online presence what would you recommend to establish uh well i would say facebook i'll say instagram but do not neglect youtube go on youtube as well go on youtube as well yes um and there's the way i believe there's a way you could interconnect all the social media and make them all function together as well 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Because yeah, when I post on on um, on Instagram, it just automatically goes to Twitter and mm -hmm. automatically goes on Facebook. I use Planoly app, you know, and I pay a small portion. I mean, small amount every month. I would like you to share like a life transforming moment in your life, uh, a moment that really changed a lot of things for you and like defined who you are maybe now or define who led to who you are right now because initially you said you used to be a banker and now you're a fashion designer and now you're just uh you you like doing a lot of things entrepreneurship and fashion designing and um, full-time student and you keep your energy level really high and i know this thing just doesn't happen overnight you don't just become something like that overnight like like a machine that's just getting things done you know so i believe there was something that was like you know that changed this thing that changed who you used to be before and now there's this new person that's like you know what i'm just gonna go after all of my dreams i'm gonna go after everything i set my mind to go after and um yeah if there's anything that you'd like to share with us i'm really interested and i believe the audience is interested <laughs> Okay, so um, I would say I started this journey, my ambitious journey from the age of 10. Mm -hmm. at the age of 10. So what happened, uh, we went, I'm from a humble background, proudly, and we went to visit um, some of our cousins. You know, we, they lived in Hyderabad area in Lagos, um, Victoria Island at the time. Their father was the CEO of the bank, you know, at the time. And it was, that, that it changed my life. You know, so my cousin was having that birthday and he was, it was grand. It was like going to White House. I mean, not White, well, going to White House. Mm -hmm. going to the palace. I know the yes. feeling. Yes. So we went there and then it was a different world entirely. They live in affluence. It was like, and then when you get home and you're like, is this where I'm coming from? You know, it was, it was just crazy. Mm hmm that day I sat down and I started thinking, you know, um, what does their father do? I didn't know what he does at the time, you know. And then, you know, so he is the CEO of a bank. I said, okay, what did he study? I'm gonna study what he studied. I'm gonna write all the exams that he wrote. That's how I started. I'm gonna write all the exams that he wrote. I'm gonna follow his steps. I'm gonna follow his path, you know, and I never looked back. You know, so I learned that he studied accounting, but, you know, he's a chartered accountant. So I started ICANN, you know, because uh -huh. of him, I started writing ICANN exams from ETS level, you know, so I learned that you can actually be a chartered accountant and study economics. Even if, if you study another course, you can still write ICANN and still be a chartered accountant, which is okay. You can kill two birds with a stone. And then I started, you know, that as well. So I studied economics. I you know, um, was writing ICANN. And fortunately, he was born on my birthday, um, December 27. So we shared the same birthday, you know. So he he was kind of like far, like he's not someone you can talk to. You know how parents are like, you know, you can not you can never see him. You know, it was impossible to reach. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When I became vice president of economics department, mm -hmm. I walked with him. And I invited him to come to Ife and speak. And he came. Interesting. He, yes. He came to Ife and he spoke. He was at my wedding as well. You know, he, he's my mentor. You know, he, he actually passed on two years ago. But um, before then, he, he's my, you know, my, my hero, my mentor. He, he's well accomplished, you know, in life. You know, so um, apart from him, I started to tell myself because I read his biography, you know, and I, I saw that he was from a humble background as well, you know, from a humble background, you know, but he chose to, you know, um, follow his dreams, but pursue his passion. He went to Harvard University, you know, he really did, you know, what everyone else, you know, couldn't do at the time. So because of him, he actually set the precedent. So um, when I graduated from, college from Ife, I, my Saturdays and my Sundays was never for me. You know, like I go to class every day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Even when I was still looking for a job, you know, because I had, because I have hung around um, high flyers for a long time. Uh -huh. I, know uh -huh. I know my, 
And at that time, um, well, 11 years ago, I told myself, if an employer is not ready to pay a minimum of 100,000 at that time, mm -hmm. I'm not ready. You know, so I was getting offers. I'm like, look, keep it to yourself. You know, I'd rather go and spend my time in class, keep developing myself, you mm -hmm. know, and then I got my first job. <laughs> you know um something that was within what i you know could take you know so i started my first job but i will go to work mondays to fridays saturdays and sundays i'm in class mm -hmm. there is no time to gist or to go to parties or to involve engage myself in something that is not productive you mm -hmm. know so it's always been like that before i got married you know mm -hmm. i've always Want to I'll go to work Mondays to Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. I because I always tell myself back then that all the movies that I missed in my lifetime, I mean, growing up, mm -hmm. all the movies I'm saying I will watch it in future. That's what I keep saying. Because <laughs> movies, they won't, those movies will not die. Like they mm -hmm. are still there to be watched anytime. You mm -hmm. know, I always tell myself that I will watch all these movies in future. Let me just work now. You know, because now that you are still young, you should toil. When you are still young, so that you can enjoy, you know, much later, and that has always and always kept me, you know. So um, by the time I got married as well, it was still the same thing. And then when I moved here, and oh my God, that was that was crazy. When I moved here, I actually came to visit my husband in December of 2015. Mm -hmm. And I came. I was a banker, so I went back in January. I spent a month here. So by the time I went back, I was pregnant with our first daughter. Mm -hmm. So came back in June of 2016 to have my baby here and I resigned from here. So when I resigned, I was like, okay, just take your time. Let the baby come. The baby came. Do you believe that two weeks after the baby arrived, I was already looking for volunteer jobs. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks right. after. Two weeks after I get, I'm like, I can't do this. I can't sit down at home. I cannot. I know the feeling. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 I, I'm feeling useless right now. I need to, I'm, I'm you know, my potential, I need to work, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My potentials. I can do a lot. Active, you have to be creative, you have to be productive. I know the drive. <laughs> so I was already applying for volunteer jobs, but the ones I saw, because we were staying in Hempstead at the time, which was about an hour plus from Houston, but the volunteer jobs I was saying were, were in Houston. You know, mm. It was too far, you know, to commute and all that. So, yeah, when that went aside, I started thinking of what I could do. And that was when I started to learn how to um, make, you know, clothes, you know, and then set up my business. And then, you know, um, from there, I started writing GRE, TOEFL. I needed to go to school. It was just time, you mm -hmm. know, I'd just be doing one thing. I have to make sure that, you know, I'm maximizing the use of my time. And mm -hmm. second counts and it's really worth it, mm -hmm. you know. So I've always had that drive, you know, right from the onset. And, yeah. you know, growing up, even as a teenager, I didn't really have much friends because a lot of people can cannot just understand me. What's wrong with this one? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, if you're driven like that, a lot of people will understand unless they share the same mindset. Yes. You know, and what you just shared is so powerful because it's, it shows the life transforming process, but you also shared something that's, that I think is fundamental, which is you knowing your what and making that sound decision in your mind that if a company doesn't pay me this, I'm not taking the job. That is, I feel like a lot of people need that kind of mindset because there are so many people that will be like, you know what, I've been around not having a job for too long. If a company is willing to offer me this amount, I'll just take it. So you just define the essence of knowing your what. And I think that's that's fundamental. That's something everyone should really look into and start looking for ways to adopt that kind of mindset into their daily living. Do you have a favorite quote that you'd like to share with us? Oh, I have a lot of quotes, but um, one, I'll just drop one. Um, if you can't run, walk. Mm -hmm. you can't walk, crawl. Mm -hmm. if you can't crawl, just keep moving. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you are not stagnant. 
you're not staying put in one place. You know, mm-hmm. you are. You know, because um, I was going to say something. I hope you didn't just keep my memory. Okay, yeah. Um, I This is outside of what you asked. But sometime um, last... Okay, this is a new month. Sometime last month, very late last month, I saw a quote that uh, if you know that you're not from a silver spoon home as a Nigerian, mm-hmm. if you know that you're not from a silver spoon home, make sure that um, when you go to the university, uh, make sure that you come out with, a great, with great grades. But I want to say something about that quote. Um, make sure that you build your network. Okay. Make sure that it is very, very key because I have seen people with first class you know, earning peanuts or remaining jobless for a long time, mm-hmm. in, you know, for like endlessly in Nigeria or getting peanuts, you know, in Nigeria. But when you build that network, a solid network for yourself, people that you can call, hey, hello, I need this thing. I need this. Ex- I have a lot of experiences that I can share around that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I want to keep it as, you know, brief. I want to respect Yeah, well, well, we have to bring you in two or three times more because you have so much value that i believe a lot of people could learn from this thing you just shared on networking is what one of the most fundamental in this channel is based on networking and you just um prove the emphasis you just emphasize the the need you know the the importance of having a strong network the networking is key basically do you have any final piece of advice for young entrepreneurs and even maybe who knows um people that are not no longer young but they're still working on themselves entrepreneurs fashionistas and maybe social media enthusiasts or content creators very simple very very simple all i'll just say is never ever ever give up on your dreams your dreams are valid and you should never ever give up on them never Thank you so much, Miriam. It's a pleasure having this conversation with you. Thank you for coming on this channel. I appreciate you. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate all your insight and all your values. And dear viewers, the most important thing is for you to listen to this and take action. It's not just watching this video and just shutting down your laptop. No, watch this video, take notes and take action very important and until next time when i'll be coming your way always remember to be your best self my name is dapo ibrahim take care everyone bye